Crank up, this is uh, 2.3. We're going to talk about applied functions, basically variation. Variation, there are three different versions of variation, and it's actually used quite often. And when we say variation, it's all about creating a simple equation, the first one being the most simplistic of direct variation, um, making a connection between two variables. <laughs> Bless you. So a lot of the times, two things are connected for the fact that as one goes up, the other one goes up. Um, sometimes they're uh, related uh, inversely, as in when one goes up, the other one goes down. And then there's a combination of the two that they call joint variation. So we're going to do with direct variation, inverse variation, and joint variation. And so you guys have all done this before. And direct variation is just when one quantity is a constant multiple of another. So basically, they both go up or they both go down together. So the definition that they have is that if the quantities x and y are related by the sorry, equation y equals kx, that's direct variation, for some constant k that does not equal 0. Because if k equals 0, then it would be y equals 0, and then that's just a horizontal line. Um, we say that, and there's three different ways that they say this. y varies directly as x. y is directly proportional to x. Or y is proportional to, or at x. Wait. Oh, okay, yeah, is proportional to x. Sometimes um, they just took out directly proportional and just said proportional. 2x. Um, those are the, both the three different ways the book is going to recognize this as you're going to see that in your wording, and therefore you'll have to automatically say that's y equals kx. And then what they're going to do for all of our problems, guys, it's going to say it's directly related, it's going to be inverse related or jointly related, and then therefore you know which equation you're going to use. It's going to then give you the two variables. It'll give you an x and a y value, so therefore you can solve for k. Down below here, the constant k is called the constant of what? What's the big word that's almost in every single one of those definitions up there? Directly. Portion. That's the wrong one. That's the white out. Okay. So it's the constant of proportionality. And direct variation, guys, is a linear function. That's another thing. Y equals KX. It just has a Y intercept of? One. Not one. Okay, it's usually a line. What lines do we like to use? What's the form? Y equals mx plus b. Y equals mx plus b. I have y equals kx. What's missing? The b. And the b stood for the y intercept. So if it's not there, that means b is a zero. So that means all of these will intercept at. Zero or zero zero or go through the origin. If you guys remember with a lot of your even your scientific type of things that you guys do your research research on, a lot of times some variables can be at zero, like time zero. You'll have nothing at zero, or temperature zero. And so a lot of things we can force to go through the origin. So maybe direct variation is a very good uh, model for that. Sometimes it's not. Obviously, if we're talking about populations, you can't get something without having something there already. So the constant or the, the um, starting amount would not be zero. And your intercept would have to be at a one or a two. So then all of a sudden, you can have growth from there. But there's a lot of things that we can force through zero to make things easier for ourselves. So direct variation is just a linear function. It's going to be a line. You guys can graph it very easily. And 
we will know that it goes through the origin. So our first example of this. So this one's a direct radiation equation. You guys, we've all been outside or been in a thunderstorm before. And people always like to figure out like how far away the storm is. I don't know if you guys heard something on the lines of this. I remember growing up, you would say one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and then they would be like, oh, that was four seconds between the time you saw the lightning and the thunder. So it was like, oh, that's like four miles away or something like that. So, but there is something to that, okay? Now, I don't know exactly what it is. We're assuming that the book kind of knows, but the book is going to say, hey, they're not giving you the direct link between the two. But it says that during a thunderstorm, you will see the lightning before you hear the thunder because light travels much, much faster than sound. And so that distance between you and the storm varies directly, there it is, y equals kx, as the time interval between the lightning and the thunder. So suppose that the thunder storm, or the thunder from the storm is 5,400 feet away and it takes you five seconds to reach you. Determine the constant of proportionality and write the equation for the variation. So basically, according to this, and I think that it'd have to be true, that every storm is slightly different. Why? Because you're going to have a little bit different pressure, you're going to have different um, things going on in the atmosphere, so it will affect how fast sound and light probably will tra travel through the sky at that, that storm. And so you knew, by looking up on the weather radar, um, that it's 5,400 feet, basically a mile away, right? And it took five seconds for that uh, sound to finally reach you. Can you guys find the constant, K, okay, and then write the equation? Key words there? 5,400. Well, 5,400 and five seconds. But the biggest key here to figure out what equation you're using is the words... No. Which equation am I going to use? Varies directly. So if you see varies directly, I am automatically going to write this down. Y equals kx. Now the biggest thing about this now is you might want to write down what's y and what's x. Here's the cool thing. Because it's direct variation, it doesn't actually matter which one you put in where, as long as you're consistent throughout the problem. The problem, though, is that sometimes they're going to give you more information, um, like in part C, where they're going to say, OK, now that you have this equation, why don't you go and use it? So what happens now if that time interval increased to 8 seconds, you know, how far away are you? And so usually you want to set up the equation really easily to put in one variable, which is usually for x's, but that's what we're so used to, so it can spit out a y, right? So in this case, what would x or y have to be, or not have to be, but what would we like it to be? Which one would that be? For the y. Yes, I think we should, because it's saying that the distance is varies with the time. And so the distance, so maybe even, we could change this. Distance, D, equals the constant proportionality times T, the time. We don't have to directly use Y equals KX. This is all in the same form. This would at least help us to establish that time's going with the constant, which will give us a distance out. So if we know a distance, though, 5,400. We don't know a constant, but we do know a time of how far? Or how long, I meant? Five seconds. Five seconds. And we could solve for k. Divide both sides by? Five. Five. What is it? 180? 1,000. 80. So, the constant actually, guys, is like a rate. It's 1,080 feet per 
second. Because, if you remember correctly, remember that 5,400 is feet, 5 is in seconds, so that would be feet per second. So, great, we found this constant. What does it mean? It means 1,080 feet per second, but that's not the equation. That's just the constant. And so I need to go plug it back in. Oops, we're not using y, are we? We're using distance equals 1080 t. Right in your equation. I'm actually answered part B, part of it. We didn't make a sketch yet. If I had to graph this, hopefully you guys recognize that I don't need much in any other quadrant but the first quadrant because time is going to march forward, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Can I just go by a thousands here? And we'll go by one second, two seconds, three seconds there. So, at time zero, how far away is the storm? If all of a sudden you saw the lightning, and go, right away. That means the storm is right above your head, right? So, zero, zero would definitely be one of them. At one second, how far away is the storm? 1,080 feet, so it's to be just over 1,000, right? Not by much, because we're going by thousands. Two seconds, it's... Uh, yeah, so here we go. Three seconds to be just over three, right? And so, when I go to connect all of these, I get a line, or a linear equation. Two-folded question, what does the constant proportionality represent? We talked about one, one version of it. What does it represent? 1,080 1, feet per second, right? It's a rate. The velocity of the sound. The velocity, okay. Right? A rate is a velocity. But on the graph, what does it represent? What are we using it as? No, no. I heard someone almost say it. Slope. I go up and over. I'm going up 1,080 feet for a one second. And then I do it again. And I keep stepping up. It's a slope. Can you guys see that? They're directly related. First of all, if you go back to the other slide, or I can just, you know, you write it here, y equals mx plus b. Well, b is 0. That's why it starts at 0. But k is the same thing as m. It's in the M spot. M is slope. So we got this really cool equation. How far would the light, how far is the storm away from you at eight seconds? Well, that's easy. No, well, we're not using Y again. D equals 1080 times eight. 280? 86. 40? 9,640 feet away. So just under what, two miles? So there is something to the old tale of counting one Mississippi, two Mississippi. 8,000. That's a bad eight. Is that better? 8,600? It's close. Okay, so it's 8,640. Okay, so the next one is inverse variation. It's on there. It's on your note packet. 
But for some reason, when I went to go take my photos of it, it did not. I must have skipped over it. So inverse variation, guys. Inverse variation still relates x and y together, but it says that y equals k over x. Oh, maybe I didn't. I did not. I think I skipped right over it. It's not in the notepad. It is there? It is. Oh. For some reason, okay. I'm like, I don't remember doing the k divided by x. Okay. But inverse variation is y equals k over x. And the way you would read this one, again, k is, um, k is the constant of proportionality. In this case, we still don't know if we would want k to be 0 because 0 divided by anything is still 0. And actually, I don't know if you're allowed to let x equal 0, are you? Okay. So you would say y varies inversely as x, or you could say varies inversely proportional as x. So you can kind of bring that proportionality type word in there as well. Most of the time, I'm just going to say y varies inversely as x. When you see that, anywhere with the inversely, varies inversely, you will write y equals k over x. Okay? If we can handle that, we should be able to say, as soon as I see that in the problem, again, same process. They're going to give you an x. They're going to give you a y. Solve for k. And then you can use that equation later on. So the real life applications of this is Boyle's Law. States that when a gas is compressed at a constant temperature, so now we're holding it to temperature constant. If we didn't, that would actually be jointly then, which is the next one. The pressure of the gas is inversely proportional to the volume of the gas. It says, suppose that the pressure of a sample of air that it occupies 0 0, or 0 0.106 meters cubed at 25 degrees Celsius is 50 kilopascals um, of pressure. Find the constant of proportionality. Write the equation, the inverse proportionality. So, we know, because of the wording, it's this. But if I wanted to make it more easier or easier to see it with this particular problem, I don't want to use X and Y. I want to use what? P and V. P and V, pressure and volume. Because it says that the pressure of the gas is inversely proportional to its volume. So which one's what? Yeah, so P equals K over, K cannot be T, because that's a different one of a constant, because if I, if you remember correctly, uh, Boyle's Law is P, I think it is um, equals K T over V, I think temperature would be on top from your or chemistry days, um, which some of you guys are still in, if not last year. Um, so here's our equation here. As you can see that if volume goes up, if you take a fixed number and divide it by a slightly larger number every time, the result will have to be smaller. Yes? And think about this as well. Is that if you have a container and you take the same amount, even if it was, um, well, gases are probably the easiest one, that you increase the size of a container, the pressure, if you have the same amount originally, has more place to go, so that, that means the pressure releases, or gets smaller or less. But if you take the same amount of air and push it into a smaller container, so the volume's smaller, well now you're taking a fixed number, dividing it by something smaller, the result is higher, or bigger number, so the pressure will go up. Notice that it's telling us that it happens to be at 25 degrees Celsius just to throw a number out there to mess you up, but it's not even part of my formula, so who cares? So, you know a volume, and you know a pressure. The pressure is 50 equals K over 0 0.106. Multiplying both sides by 0.106 you found out that K would have to equal what? 5.3? Ooh, does anybody have a label for this thing by chance?
Yeah, it's a kilopascals times meters cubed. That's what it means. But the equation, P equals 5.3 over V. That's your equation. And then in part B it says use it. Basically, I expand the volume almost threefold. Can you guys see that? From point 0.106 to point 0.3. The pressure, without even doing this, what's going to happen with the pressure? Going up or down? Down. It's down. We increase volume, pressure goes down. Yes. So 5.3 over 0.3 equals... 17.67 kilo, kilo, kilo pascals, right? I put the wrong variable. It should be a little k. Little k. Okay, is there any questions to that? These are all that, they're that easy. You just got to make sure you use the right equation. Watch your wording. And the last one, you don't even have to solve for it. It just says write the equation. Now, joint variation, guys, is if the quantities x, y, and z are related by the equation of z equals k, x, y, where k is a non-zero constant. We can say z varies jointly as z and y, or sorry, it must be x and y, not z and y. That's an x. x and y. Or z is jointly proportional to x and y. So basically, you're seeing the word jointly, which means it's all related in a row. They're all being multiplied together. Now, this actually has a couple different ways you could say these. It can be directly related with x, but inversely related with y. Or the other way around. Which means the x would be on top, y would be on the bottom. K is always going to stay on top. It just makes it easier for us. We also, like in our example, can be directly related to the square of something, the cube, the cube root, the square root. It doesn't matter. And inversely the same way. So in our example, it says Newton's law of gravitation says that two objects with masses m1 and m2 are attracted to each other with a force f that is jointly proportional to their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance r between the objects. Express Newton's law of gravitation as an equation. So you know you're using the fact that there's going to be quantities multiplied and possibly divided because it says inversely. What's being multiplied? What's directly? Basically, it doesn't say it's directly, but it doesn't say inversely. So, it means assumes it's on top. So, we are looking at something that looks like this, somewhat. Z equals KXY. I can obviously, I got a mass M1 and M2 and R, which is a distance between objects. What do we want to use for Newton's law of gravitation? What variable? Because it really doesn't really matter. G for gravitate, gravity. We can use that. So the gravity will be affected by a K, a constant. What else? What about their masses? Well, it says that it's that says that two objects, um, two, 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 two. oh, with a force F. So actually, we shouldn't be using G. We should be using F, right? Or force. Gravitational force, G, G force. Um, that wasn't too strong yesterday. Um, so F, that is jointly proportional, as you can see. We're reading a little bit further. So F is jointly proportional to their masses. So I'm guessing that it's M1, M2 because they're masses. And it says inversely to the square of R. 
So divide by r squared. So in this particular problem, to make a k value or your, find your constant, they have to give you the force when you have the two objects' masses given and the distance between them. Okay? And that's how it all works. Homework is page 172, 1 through 22, every 3, 23, 27, and 33. Have a great day.